What is going on guys? Welcome back to this episode of Home Built Workshop. Today, I'm going to reproduce a project that I made a lot of years ago with my grandpa. Stick around. I'm going to start this project out with a log of aspen. This is locally claimed wood. It's something that somebody was taken down and basically just salvaged from their yard. I am not 100% sure how this is going to work, but I think this area right here will be a good clamping area so that I can start to establish at least one flat square edge. It kind of sits a little bit flat right there. I'm guessing this is just where it was cut off with a chainsaw. Starting with a draw knife, I'll just remove the bark and begin to establish a flat surface. Once I have it reasonably flat, I'll use a hand plane to make sure it's perfectly flat. Now I can flip the piece over and roughly flatten the other side using the draw knife. I'm not shooting to get it perfectly flat here, just close. Now I've got one relatively flat surface, and then this one's just roughly evened up. I think it's safe to go ahead and run this thing through my planer just to get two parallel sides, and then we can start working on the other sides. This seemed to work out really well. Now it would have been a lot easier if I could have just cut off a slab from one side, but this log is too large to fit through my bandsaw to slice it off, so I had to just nibble it away on the planer. Now with two parallel sides, I can run one of those sides against the fence on my jointer and by making a bunch of passes, I can now establish one square side. And now by running it through the planer again, we now have a perfect square. Now I'm going to dig out this little sled that I built for my bandsaw. This will help me square up both ends of the board. And now I can lay out for my three different size blocks and cut them at the bandsaw. Now I've got my three different heights, but to recreate the original design, I need these two shorter ones to be a little bit smaller. Each of these three squares are a half inch smaller than the previous one. I'll just make those cuts on the table saw. Now I have three stair step size blocks and we're ready to drill the hole for the candles. I'm gonna apply some masking tape so that I can make my measurements on the tape instead of the wood. This way I don't have to sand it off later. And by lining up my Forstner bit with my pencil marks, I can press down on the bit to mark where I need to drill. That's where we'll drill. And in case you haven't seen it before, when you need to line up a drill bit with a center punched mark, Anything that has a brad point on it, whether it's a Forstner bit, spade bit, or a regular brad point bit, you can bring your piece under the drill bit, lift it up, and find that hole with the center point of the drill bit, then bring the quill of your drill down, and as long as you don't lift that back up there, you're not going to lose your mark and you're going to be right in alignment. I'm going to drill these to accept both a tea light candle as well as a standard taper candle. A tea light candle is about an inch and a half around, so I'm going to start with an inch and a half Forstner bit. Once I drill them to just under the height of a tea light candle, I'm going to switch over to a 7 8 Forstner bit and drill the holes for the taper candle. So I think now would be a good spot for me to jump in here and just say a few things about safety. Now obviously this is a candle holder. Candles have fire. Fire can burn your house down. If you are building a candle holder, please make sure that it holds your candles securely. We don't want anything to tip over and start something on fire. You can also get metal inserts that are made specifically to hold taper candles, and I would actually recommend you doing this if you're going to build a candle holder like this or of any other design, if it's gonna hold a standard taper candle. Buy the inserts, they're not very expensive. But the bottom line, guys, is just be responsible. Don't catch anything on fire. Have fun building your project, but make sure that it keeps everything safe, sound, and secure. Now let's get back to the project. It's time for me to sand. Now we're going to head over to the bandsaw and I'm going to show you how we're going to create the detail around the edges of these. 
So here's my setup at the bandsaw. I have a stop block right here, which is square to the table, which will act as a stop this way. I also have a block clamped at the back. That's gonna be a depth stop so that I don't cut too far down on the blade. It will only allow it to go so far. This part of the process is the part that I remember the most from building the original. I remember when my grandpa made these little cuts on his bandsaw, how cool I thought that was that you could do that kind of thing. Up until then, I'd only used a bandsaw to just cut out shapes and parts, never to do anything decorative like this. Now I'm just gonna take a piece of sandpaper, fold it in half, and just do one pass down through each groove just to remove a couple of those little fuzzies. Now I'm gonna glue this thing up. I'm gonna try to work right on the corner of the table. I'm hoping that by using the corner, I can get to this thing from all angles and get good clamp pressure. There we go. That ought to hold, but we'll just let that glue dry. With the piece out of the clamps, I realized I never actually tested the fit of a tea light. Turns out, the hole's just a little bit small. That's okay, that's an easy fix. These little sanding cleaning sticks, definitely worth getting a few of these things. I use them all the time on everything from the belt grinder to the sanding drums, any sort of sandpaper, these really seem to help prolong the life. Keeps them from getting all clogged up and ruined. Aha! And now, we're ready for some finish. I'm gonna keep it pretty simple for the finish, just a few coats of satin spray lacquer. Once the lacquer's dry, this thing is now ready to load up with some candles. And there you have it guys, the candle holder is complete. I had a lot of good memories of making this project with my grandpa. I still remember clearly when he cut the lines on here with his bandsaw, how cool that was to me at the time. I just remember looking at it and being so excited, so amazed that you could do something like that. Thanks a lot for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and this inspires you to go make something for the holidays. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. Uh -huh.